Hi everyone. In this lecture, we are going to learn about one process of transferring bacterial genetic material called bacterial transformation. This lecture will be divided into five subtopics. The first one is introduction and the elegant experiment which lead to the discovery of transformation process in bacteria. Next, we will learn about the concept of competency since not all bacteria can undergo natural transformation. We will then look at the mechanism of DNA transfer focusing on how DNA being uptake from outside the cell. For the fourth subtopic, we will see how cell competency can be induced in the lab. The process is also called as artificial transformation. And the last one is transfection. Transformation is one of three processes by which exogenous genetic material may be introduced into a bacterial cell. So the first one is conjugation, which is the process transferring genetic material between two bacterial cells in direct contact. The second one is transduction, which is the injection of foreign DNA by a bacteriophage virus into the host bacteria. And the third one is transformation. This is what we will be learning later on. In this process, transformation usually resulted in a stable genetic change brought about by the uptake of naked DNA. Naked DNA here referring to the DNA without any associated cell or protein. In a simple definition, Transformation is basically a process when organisms acquire free exogenous DNA or we can also call them as a naked DNA. Bacterial transformation can occur in two ways. First, natural and the second one is artificial. We will talk about artificial transformation later in another subtopic as there are many methods in molecular biology that can be utilized to induce the uptake of free DNA. In natural condition, cells take up foreign naked DNA from its surrounding environment at a very low frequency. This DNA transfer from outside to the inside of bacteria is actually important as source of genetic diversity and potentially provide benefit to the host. Usually, DNA from that bacterial cell will be free in the environment and other cells can become a recipient by taking this free DNA into them. Genetic transformation is one beneficial example of transformation process. The recipient cell that have received the new DNA may subsequently experience genetic changes that could bring advantage to them. Can you think of other benefit that bacteria will get when they acquire free DNA from outside? The bacterial transformation process was first discovered sometime in year 1928 by Fred G. Griffith, a physician who was based in London. After World War I and influenza pandemic, he got very much interested to study on patients suffered from pneumonia. In his observation, he found that pneumonia can be caused by a virulent strain of bacteria containing polysaccharide capsule. There are many other strains and those strains can be differentiated into several types depending on the type of capsule possessed by the bacteria. He later conducted an experiment to understand how a patient can be co-infected by different strains of bacteria. For your information, the species causing the influenza pandemic was in the genus Pneumococcus when Griffith worked on it but it has since been reassigned to Streptococcus. Griffith used two strains of Streptococcus pneumoniae, which is type 3S and type 2R. To make it simple, we just call S and R without having to bother about strain. S represents the smooth, virulent strain, whereas R represents rough, a non-virulent or avirulent strain of Streptococcus pneumoniae. As virulent, as it is coated with a polysaccharide that protects the cell from immune system, which then make bacteria become infectious. Meanwhile, R is avirulent and the colony look rough since it's lacking capsule 
can be recognized and destroyed by immune system, thus making it harmless. In the experiment, he exposed mice to both R and strain bacteria via injection. For the first stage of experiment, he observed that mice injected with S bacteria died, but those injected with R lived. The result conformed to his expectation since S is the virulent one that can cause fatal pneumonia. For the next stage, he was using S strain, yet the bacteria were priorly killed with heat. As expected, all mice injected with heat treated as lived. This indicates that bacteria has been rendered ineffective due to the heat treatment. The interesting result came with the third stage, where mice was injected with mixture of heat kill S and leaf R. Surprisingly, all mice died, and isolation tests show virulent bacteria with smooth colony can be seen growing on agar plate. So, what can be concluded from Griffith's experiment? Based on the third experiment, Griffith thought that one component of dead bacteria can transform live a virulent R to become virulent. The component could either be polysaccharide, protein, lipids, or DNA. He didn't know yet. In addition, Griffith postulated that mystery substance must have three criteria as listed. First, it had to be duplicated so it could be passed. Two, it had to be in the form of an informational code. And three, it had to be stable and resistant to change. The transforming principle Griffith observed was actually the DNA originated from the S bacteria. While the bacteria had been killed, DNA had survived the heating process and later was taken up by R bacteria. The S DNA actually contained gene that formed the protective polysaccharide capsule. When R bacteria get this gene, the R bacteria now protected from the host immune system as it cannot be killed due to the presence of polysaccharide capsule. Sadly, Fred Griffith and his lab co-worker were killed in their lab in 1940 from a German bomb. However, their works continue on in the US and in 1944, Avery, McLeod, and McCarty carefully demonstrated that the only material that was responsible for the transformation was DNA when they were using purified DNA from encapsulated as pneumonia. This became one of the first important experiments in biology and provided first evidence that DNA is actually the factor responsible for the inheritance of traits.